Hello everybody, my name is Ray. Welcome to the Evangelical Dark Web. Today, we're gonna to follow up on our last video on Doug Wilson and Kevin DeYoung. Doug Wilson has struck back and he has offered a lengthy rebuttal to Kevin DeYoung's article. That was a harsh criticism of Doug Wilson and the Moscow mood, which has really set off an entire week-long plus conversation on the Moscow mood and the glass house that the Gospel Coalition lives in, that Kevin DeYoung operates in. And that has really been a major criticism of Kevin DeYoung's article from other people. I erred on the side of caution in my last video when I described Kevin DeYoung's affiliation with the Gospel Coalition. He is currently one of their leaders. He is currently one of their leaders. He's one of the people that could be an influence for good, or at least someone who fights for the integrity of that organization, but Kevin DeYoung does nothing to fight for the integrity of the Gospel Coalition. Otherwise, he would be public about his disagreements with the Gospel Coalition and their direction. And, again, this whole hypocrisy of Kevin DeYoung does appear in part in Doug Wilson's article. Now, Doug Wilson very long-winded in his response, very winsome in his response. And we're going to look at it right here. But first, I want to let you know, Evangelical Dark Web is a Christian news gathering and commentary ministry. You can support us over at evangelicaldarkweb.org slash join. join. We are not a big evil organization. We rely on the little guy. But the least you can do is like this video, subscribe to the channel, to the podcast if you are new. So, uh, Doug Wilson wrote a lengthy article. Uh, we are not going to go over all of it. It is my rejoinder to Kevin DeYoung, uh, published December 4 by Doug Wilson. <clears throat> and something about this article, and I don't know if this is how every Doug, Ar Doug Wilson article works, but I read this in Doug Wilson's voice. Because he just has that type of voice that's very conducive and translates very well to his articles. I don't know if my articles do that, but uh, let me know in the comments section if they do. So, we're going to skip ahead in this section. Uh, he does compliment Kevin DeYoung. He does uh, summarize the situation. He has a pretty funny line in here about how he's criticizing him for not writing enough, uh, that he should write, you know, Kevin DeYoung wants Doug Wilson to write more of what he wants Doug Wilson to write of. And, you know, Doug Wilson responds humorously with that. Uh, but we're going to skip down here to where some of the more serious problems really creep up. So, to summarize this section, there's a lot about worldliness, and Doug Wilson's saying that he's not really falling for the worldliness snare. I, I do think that he believes that Kevin DeYoung is more actually operating to the standards of worldliness, but I wanted to pick up here in the thumb screws of Catholicity, which I think is a more useful section. So here's the section where Kevin DeYoung complained that I, as in Doug Wilson, took Jab, took the jab uh, that he took at ERLC and G3. So the direct quote from Kevin DeYoung is, he takes a swipe at the Ethics and Religious Liberty Commission and at the G3 conference. Both are conservative Baptist groups. Groups, we might add, that would be on the same side as Wilson in almost every important cultural battle. Now, uh... I'll let Doug Wilson speak for himself because I've already commented on that atrocious line from Kevin DeYoung. With regard to the ERLC, this is simply not true. The increasingly progressive tilt of the ERLC has been a major ma has been a matter of public controversy in the Southern Baptist Convention, and the fact that Kevin is not aware of how far left they have drifted on. A number of issues is itself an indicator of how bad the situation has gotten. So, yes, the fact that Kevin DeYoung doesn't even know, which I would say he refuses to know, because 
How much of an ostrich do you have to be to not know that the ERLC is a left-wing organization? Uh, so I, I actually, I don't view that with stupidity. I view that with malice on Kevin DeYoung's part. G3, uh, Wilson continues, is a really is a conservative group. But one that brings us back to the theme of this section, which is Catholicity and who is actually the standoffish one. Cross Politic was invited to participate in a G3 conference a few years ago, but then they were told um, they could not have me, Doug Wilson, on as a guest on their show while there. I would have been happy to participate to participate and please to associate with G3, it didn't go the other way. Perhaps Kevin should admonish G3, telling them that Wilson is a conservative and that he would be on their side in almost every important cultural battle. See if that works. So again, uh, there is an unequal weights and measures being applied by Kevin DeYoung. He's criticizing, you know, the tone and the standoffishness of Doug Wilson, but there's a lot of standoffishness to go around in Big Eva. And G3 is a Big Eva organization. Its personalities, you know, Scott Annual, Josh Bice, and Virgil Walker are really mid-Eva. You know, but G3 is a huge organization. Uh, in terms of market share and website size, it, it's Big Eva. There's just no other way around that. So that that's a very valid critique of G3 that Doug Wilson brings. So uh, he continues, I'm skipping a paragraph here. Kevin really ought to know how willing we are to link arms with people who are outside our native, our native orbit. We have certainly invited him to come work with us enough times. Kevin does good work, and we support it. I've appreciated reading his stuff. We would be willing to work with him, despite the fact that there are men with him on the TGC Council that we believe to be badly compromised. But if Kevin were ever to accept an invitation from us, do you think he, that he would get any fierce pressure from them? Just a thought experiment, and we already know the answer. In short, we are not the ones thinking ourselves better than other folk. So, basically, would uh, the Gospel Coalition say nothing or even be supportive of Kevin e. Young if he were to go on a Doug Wilson podcast or something? And the answer is... They would speak up about that. So, uh, yeah, this was the paragraph where he talks about what, you know, he, Kevin DeYoung wants him to do more of the wholesome writing. And he rounds up some of the uh, critiques that have been laid on the uh, articles otherwise. Uh, I do want to skip down to the cussing debate, which also highlights a hypocrisy on their standard. Now, again, I don't think that the gospel coalition is necessarily wrong in this instance, but if you are part of the gospel coalition and you go after Doug Wilson for cussing, you have set a standard that you also have to follow and they don't follow it. So tuss cussing and the Tukakwi fallacy is basically uh, what we're going to talk about now. There is an informal fallacy in the in reasoning, which is called tu quoque fallacy. This is Latin for, oh yeah, well, you do it too. But a man who is charged with stealing something cannot defend himself appropriately by saying that his accuser also stole something earlier. This is a fallacy of deflection, an attempt to change the subject. If you are a thief, then you are a thief, regardless whether there are others who are also in the same category. So Kevin DeYoung is a member of the gospel co is a council member for the gospel coalition. When I 
point to the standard for language set by the TGC approach to movie reviews, I need to explain how this is not too cocky in action. Rather, this is a straightforward inconsistency pointed in the link to Tom Buck's tweet linked above. And we're not going to discuss the Tom Buck tweet. <clears throat> to cockery retort happens when it is assumed and acknowledged that both sides are doing the same thing, both stealing, as in the example above. But my use of hot sauce language is completely different than the use commended by multiple TGC movie reviews. The thing that I'm accused of, I am not doing, and the thing that the accuser attempts to throw at me, the accuser is doing. And for me to be one to point that out is not a fallacy of distraction at all. What this amounts to is a recognition of basic biblical truth. And he cites Matthew 2, 7, 2 on, you know, the standard of which you judge others, you will also be judged. So big standard of equal weights and measures there. Uh, he cites Romans 2, 3. He cites Galatians 6, 1, which talks about self-awareness. That's a big theme in Galatians 6, 1 through 5, by the way. Uh, what I believe this points to is that the objections to my language has more to do with where that language is aimed than it has to do with the presence or absence of certain words. Kevin and the mere men in his circle do not mind being associated with certain words. They embrace that association. They recommend that Christians go to movies that are filled with it. But they do mind that kind of language being deployed against the sins of the age by a fellow Christian. Just before writing this paragraph, I went back and reread the famous piece where I used the C word, you know, the British word. <laughs> uh, I would be willing to write every syllable of it again today and moreover to defend it as a stand for righteousness. Because that is exactly what it was. The article was filled to the brim with art arguments and had one stark word in it. Everyone wants to gasp and point to that to the word because they think they can score some easy points that way and they refuse to engage with any of the reasonable any of the arguments because they know they can't engage with them. No one answers the arguments. So, and in something of a surprise twist, I find myself in broad agreement with Paul Tripp on this, where such things should be evaluated on the basis of, basis of contents and intention. And I'm surprised that Desiring God apparently comes down on this in a certain way, because uh, that's John Piper's ministry, and John Piper is not a big fan of Doug Wilson. Moreover, John Piper is very dogmatic about things that are not sins, but calling them sins. Uh, you see this with sports gambling. You see this with role playing in the bedroom between married couples. So he's very dogmatic on things that the Bible does not say are sins. But you know, it's John Piper we're talking about. I don't, I don't, I don't like John Piper. I'll be serious. I'll, I'll be frank about that. Um, and this is why I would say that Kevin and Justin T Taylor with him are simply being hypocritical. I'm not saying they're, I'm not saying damned hypocrites. Ooh, he used some hot sauce language there. Um, like the Pharisees in Matthew 23, but they are being ma manifestly hypocritical the way Peter and Barnabas were at Antioch. Good men doing a bad thing. They really ought to quit. You can support movie reviewers finding gospel themes in a secular movie with over a hundred F-bombs in it. But you can't find gospel themes in a blog post that had, that had overt and hot gospel in it because there was one crude word in there. And that one word was aimed at the heart of a, of a particular sin for which the blood of Christ would bring true forgiveness. What this boils down to is that the camel is all gone, and we can we still can't find that gnat. 
Just know that some of my hardest hitting posts, I have routinely made the point that I can that of concluding with a jet fuel gospel presentation. That doesn't happen by accident. I am a minister of this gospel. And if you can't find the gospel themes in that di- kind of direct gospel presentation, but you can find them in a Taylor Swift tour, then something is seriously off. And that was some hotness coming out of Doug Wilson. Like, this guy is cooking in this section. Seriously cooking, and this has been a long article of that section cooks. So, I want to skip down below because this is basically the crux of the rest of the article is that Kevin DeYoung is sucker punching Doug Wilson. So he, he continues, I'm sorry that I need to explain this. But that's not how this works. You don't get to launch a critique like this at someone designed to make a lot of good-hearted people think twice about their attraction to the Moscow mood and then with a flourish, refuse to take questions or be too busy for replies. You can't launch an attack and then call for a ceasefire. Basically, Kevin DeYoung is sucker punching him. He's punching him in the face and then running away. Except it didn't quite work. He continues, This is particularly the case when your critique failed as a knockout blow. If there were no possible answers, and we defenders of the Moscow mood were all just sitting around shamefacedly, you could easily afford to take questions because there wouldn't be any. But if it turns out that this was a swing and a miss, And there are consequently a host of questions, many of which would be very awkward for Kevin to try and answer. You cannot say that this would take a lot of time. Yes, it does. It takes up a lot of our time as well. Why did you start this then? The reason for starting it is that the big evil world is starting to see significant deflections and it is concerning them very much. They consider them deflections, we just call them reassignments. There are rank and file deflections and there are high profile deflections like Jared and Joe, but in this climate, I cannot imagine anyone who is already being drawn to the Moscow mood being in any way slowed down by Kevin's piece. The reactions I have seen online bear this out. So, Basically, he's saying this article did not get the intended effect of slowing down the Moscow mood. If anything, it's probably hastening it. Because, as I wrote in the article that I wrote on this, I like Doug Wilson's way of doing something better than Kevin DeYoung's way of doing nothing. And that's ultimately what a lot of this boils down to is turf war... He's doing something that I wouldn't do a certain way, while Kevin DeYoung doesn't even get his own house in order as a council member of the Gospel Coalition. This is rank hypocrisy. Doug Wilson calls it out. Um, He doesn't say it's damned hypocrisy. And I'll reiterate that as well. But it does matter who the messenger is in a critique. Galatians 1-5 through you know, basically says you got to be self-aware about these things. Uh, Jesus also teaches that, you know, about the log and gnat, log and splinter. These, The person who's the messenger needs to be self-aware about the message that they are about to deliver to their brother. If they are singing in the same way, unironically, They are hypocrites. Their message, even if correct, is dismissible. And that's how I feel about Kevin DeYoung's message, about his critique. Even though I've often considered him one of the good guys in Big Eva. And even still, he wrote a very intelligent piece. I don't know if it was this year or last year. We talked about 
you know, out populating the left and demographically terraforming the country through having more babies. That was a very good piece by Kevin DeYoung. But we don't get that a lot from him. We don't. We don't get that a lot from the Gospel Coalition. So that's all I got to say about that for now. My name's Ray. This is the Evangelical Dark Web. If you like this kind of content, subscribe to the channel. Until then, I will catch you on the next one.